Well, I hope you had a good week this week. Have you? Huh? Okay. Today I just want to share five verses with us uh, because uh, these are verses that uh, I felt during the time that I had my operation and the time that I was recuperating. And uh, sometimes, you know, uh, when I went to States, I did not plan to have an operation. I had no idea I would have an operation. I knew that around my house, where I live, uh, the, the little aisle out in front, I could not walk around that without stopping because I was out of breath. But uh, somehow, I, w I never thought that I would have a four artery bypass operation. I never even thought about that. And uh, so I, I went and then on September 4, they had an angiogram. I had to delay it two weeks because they gave me some medicine that uh, raised my creatinine. And he said, the doctor said, I can't even do your angiogram. It's too bad, I'll hurt your kidneys. And so, okay. Uh, I was prepped and ready to go, and so I said, okay. So I came back in two weeks, got blood tests. I got so many blood tests, man, I think I about ran out of blood. I don't know, but uh, so many. And, uh, but uh, then I, after two weeks, they said, okay. And September 4, I got the angiogram. And September 5, I was on the operating table. And... Uh, I, I sure hadn't planned that. I didn't know, but uh, it was, it's kind of funny. Uh, I, I had the doctors come in and the doctor said, I'm going to assist in your operation. Okay, thank you. And uh, another one said, I'm going to, I'm going to help you also. I'm going to be your anesthesiologist and I'm going to be this and that. And then the last guy came in he said, well, I, I know I need to give you a shot that will relax you. And so I thought, well, that's a good idea. And uh, next thing I woke up about five days later, because uh, uh, they put me out before they ever took me in the uh, operating room, which I'm thankful they did, because I would not be so nervous and knowing what's going to happen to my life. And so it was kind of uh, glad, but all the nurses and my rehab was all, uh, all good. And so... I'm strong, but I'm not really steady on my walking. And I thought, well, I walk like some of you out there. Huh? I, <laughs> yeah. But uh, this getting old is not, not for children. It's, you got to be tough to be old. Huh? And so, yeah. So that's what happened. I'm going to try and just show you some verses today that I hope that you will claim for your very own self, understand them, and claim them in your life. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. First, uh, and uh, it says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You know, many things happen to us that we never, never thought that would happen to us. We wake up and things look good, and what's going to happen to us today? Many of you have had some things happen in your life that you didn't plan on. It just happened, right? Huh? Uh, we don't like to hear the word, I got cancer. We don't like to hear the words of, you know, you're going to have to have an operation. We don't like to hear those things because we're not planning on those things. And so, uh, in my life, uh, I've never been very sick, too bad. I've been sick. But this is something I sure never did plan on. I never, never thought that this operation I would have to have. And, uh, but, you know, I had to have it. And uh, so I, I'm glad we got it done. And let me just be honest with you. There was a time that I was so feeling so bad. I felt really bad. And I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what was expected of me. Uh, during that time, right after, right after the operation, and I felt bad one day, and I said, Lord, it's okay. You can take me. I've had a great life. I've been blessed by you, great people in our church, and Lord, it's okay. If you want to take me, it's okay. And uh, 
I'm kind of glad he didn't take that, my words, huh? Uh, but I felt so bad, I didn't even know if I could make it. But I'm thankful for my son, Eddie, who had been through this operation. And uh, he said, Dad, you can make it. Keep going. You can make it. I said, I don't know if I can make it. I went one time to uh, see about my rehab. And uh, I was in a wheelchair. And uh, this nurse talked about all about rehab. And I was so, so down, so weak, that I uh, had a bunch of papers we had to fill out. And Eddie had already filled them out for himself. But he filled them out. And I said, OK, I can't do it. And he did it. And he said, OK, Dad, sign here. I didn't know what I was signing. Uh, that's dangerous when you don't know what you're signing. But got through. And uh, he said, no, you cannot do rehab. You're too weak. I was very weak. And uh, so he said, we're going to postpone it. And so we postponed it two weeks. Then I could begin to do my exercise and rehab and things like that. But I did not know what would happen every day. I just did not know. When I was in ICU and all those things, my, uh, it was really something. So new experience for me. Some of you have been through that experience. And uh, I hope that you've learned, like I learned, to trust in the Lord. I do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. You do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. We're in our life. You know, we don't plan on dying. We don't plan on having these big, serious operations that sometimes we do have. We don't plan on those things. We don't plan on accidents and car, motorcycle, and whatever it might be. We don't plan on those things, but they do happen in our life. So we don't need to plan for tomorrow. We need to learn what the Word of God says, that we live day by day. We just live by this day. We're not worrying about tomorrow, but we're going to live this day for the Lord, doing what he wants us to do, and whatever we're doing in our life, we need to go. Don't, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. And we don't know when the Lord is really coming back. Our world is getting into a place of so many things that the Lord is seeing. We're seeing some scriptural things fulfilled. When I think about all of our technology, when I think about all the things that's happening in our world, what people are talking about is going to happen. My the Lord is going to be coming back one of these days. Not yet, but we're going to be, he's coming. And uh, we have not got to the place that we are so troubled and so burdened down that we say, Lord, come quickly. Lord, come. But we know that there has been many, many Christians that have been martyred and killed uh, because of their faith in Jesus Christ. I got a, a message uh, that the one, one that people have, they've destroyed 100, 200 churches in a country uh, and they've destroyed the churches. Christians are going to be killed. 200 Christians also have been killed in some of these countries in the Middle East. And you know, when you think about all that, Christianity is under siege of Satan and evil and wickedness to destroy Christians. So we ought to be thankful for our nation, for our country, that we still believe the Bible, still believe the word of God. And we ought to be thankful for that. So we do not really know what is going to happen in our life every day, in our country, in our home, with our family could have various diseases that happen. We know that. So we don't want to boast about tomorrow because we just don't know what is going to happen. Then another, another verse that we need to think about uh, is, uh, let me see, okay. Uh, another verse we got to think about is uh, this one. And I hope we do this in our life. Proverbs chapter three and four, five and six. This is verses that we, we know, we've had them, we've taught them, we've spoken to people uh, about these. And, you know, uh, we have to continually remember these things. Proverbs, great book. 
I'd encourage you to read the book of Proverbs, even if it's only one chapter every day, because every verse is a whole sermon, a whole lesson for us to learn. And Proverbs, he says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thy own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You know, sometimes we wonder, why did I, I wonder, why did I have that operation? I never even thought about I would have a problem like that. But you know what? We have to learn to trust in the Lord. Whatever happens to us, whatever danger, whatever sickness, whatever disappointment that we have in our lives, we have to say, Lord, okay, I'm going to trust you for this day. I'm going to trust you for strength. I'm going to trust you for wisdom today that whatever happens to me, I, I know it's going to be okay. And, you know, we need to pray that God would lead us to the right people to witness to, be the right people that you and I could talk to and encourage them in their Christian life. In our world today, there's so many things, and it's easy to become discouraged. It's easy for us not to be thinking about other people. When you think about you know, think about Manila now. My, the traffic is terrible, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, it's traffic. And we all end up, what happens? We all get in a hurry. We don't have time for doing all the things that we got to do. And therefore, we are not friendly. We are not to encourage people. We're not there to be a help to anybody because we're in such a rush. We're tired. We got to get home. The traffic is bad. A lot of things happening that change our thinking and makes us forget that as a Christian, we are to be able to reach out to other people, to encourage them, talk to them, and show them that, hey, I do care about you. Many people don't feel cared for in our world today. And that's, that's, kinda, that's a sad thing. But the pressure of living and working and doing what you got to do is putting us so that we don't have time to be neighborly. Do you know your neighbor? Huh? Do you ever see your neighbor? Huh? We don't see our neighbor, you know, because they come in late. They get up early and go. You know, we don't get to see them. I don't see my neighbors very much. And so it's because they're busy, I'm busy, and I'm not out all the time to on the street. You know, I you don't remember this, but we, in America, when I was a kid, people used to sit on their front porch and visit with other their neighbors. You know, I don't know. Do you remember that? You have to be old to know that. How many of you are old? Oh, there's eight, eight or ten. That's all. Huh? How many of you are young? Oh, we got a few more young ones than old ones, huh? Yeah. But you know, just to the living is more to work. There's more to living than work, paycheck, and doing things. There's more to living than that. And so we're, that's why we today have to say, Lord, I don't know what all I got to do, but I've learned in my life, whenever I want to do this and I plan this and I plan that, and something happens, I don't get to do that, then God wants me to be doing this other thing that kind of stopped me from doing what I was going to do. I don't know if that's the way in your life, but that's the way I look at it. I'm going to do this, but then things happen. I don't get to do it. I have to end up doing something else that I didn't plan to do. And so that's when we say, Lord, direct our lives. Direct me to people. And always be ready. Always be ready with a track. Always be ready to say a word. Cindy told me that when I was uh, is still coming out of my... Uh, uh, ether and all the other stuff that put me to sleep the doctors kept they kept asking me uh, where are you I said I'm in Springfield Missouri y you are yes and I, I think they wanted me to say the hospital but I'm either in the Philippines or I'm in Springfield you know and so Cindy told me that whenever I was trying to come out of my uh, anesthesia and all that that they kept asking me Questions like, what's your birth date? You know, when were you born? Huh? And all those things. What is your name? And so then they asked me, uh, they was asking me, 
uh, what do you, this one, the doctors were there, she said, and they said, what do you do in the Philippines? And I, she said, I don't remember this at all, but she said, uh, well, I'm a missionary. I'm telling people how to be born again. I'm telling people what the word of God says and have to be, and be born again. And I said, are you born again? And some of them said, yes. And one of them said, are you born again? No, I'm not. And she said, I said, I don't even have any idea about that. So when I'm under the anesthesia, I'm still preaching, okay? Because huh? <laughs> I didn't remember that at all. But you know, I, I didn't know what God was directing and doing in my life. I really did not know. I didn't plan that at all. And uh, I, I really did not know it's going to take so long to get over. Eddie said it's going to take me a, I'm, I'm, my bones are all healed. Where they sawed my breastbone in two, uh, it's all healed. It took three to four months to properly heal. And uh, so I'm okay. They wouldn't let me ride in the front seat of a car uh, because if the airbag came out and hit my chest, they said it's going to, it's going to harm you. And so I could not drive. I haven't driven for many months because they said, no, you can't drive. And you, you can't sit in the, you have to sit in the back seat of the car. And okay, so I did all that. I didn't know all those things was going to be happening to me, but that's what happened. And so you have to trust the Lord to direct your path every day. I remember a guy was coming to our house and uh, help us and uh, he didn't come. He didn't get there. He finally came about five o'clock at night. And uh, we said, uh, he said, oh yeah. He said, I was hit by a taxi and I've been in the hospital and then I got, uh, okay. So I came here at five o'clock. I said, okay. I said, what happened? He said, I forgot to pray when I crossed the street. Uh, so I thought, okay, that's a, probably a good thing. You know, have to pray and you better look around which way you're going. So are you willing to say, take these verses and say, Lord, in all thy ways, I will, ask, I will trust you. As he says here, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to your own understanding. God has a plan for our lives. And there are certain things that you need to, people that you need to meet, people that you need to see, certain things that God wants you to do. And so you have to be willing to do it. Are you willing to do that? Are you ready to talk to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be that way because we're to witness to everyone and uh, we don't lean to our own understanding. Just follow the leadership of God. Would you say, can you answer that question? I am following the leadership of God in my life. All the decisions that you have to make, going back to school, going back to job, to work, to get married, whatever it is, are you saying, God, I want your will, I want you to direct me, and I will follow what you want me to do? That's what this verse is telling us. Acknowledge him, let him direct us, and depend on him that he will give you the right things that's better for you. So many times we, we have to back up and say, okay, Lord, I'm going to do this, but I can't. I won't do it because you're stopping me from going through a door. It's much better. I'm so glad the doctor that uh, gave me that medicine that raised my creatinine very high, I'm glad that he said I can't do it. Get the angiogram. Because they, I was already on the hospital bed, I was prepped, I was ready for them to do it. But he said I can't do it. And so we had to go home and I had to go back two weeks. It seemed like everything was postponed postponed. It took me longer and longer to do the things that was happening to me. But I have to say, Lord, okay, that's your will. I will accept your will, whatever that is. I will accept your will. We don't like to think of the bad things that happens to us, but we have to accept God's will of the things that happen to us that we might consider bad. But there's a reason that God has things happen to us learning to trust him, learning to live for him, learning to do his will. Now, another thing, a verse that meant so much to me, was uh, that 
here it says Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 these are verses that I think we have memorized but you know uh, there is uh, uh, things that we have to go back to and we have to claim the promises of those things that happen here in verse 19 it said for God shall supply all your needs according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This is not necessarily talking about money. This is talking about in our inner spiritual life that we have, that he will supply all of our needs. There are times that we need wisdom. How many times do you pray for wisdom, God? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, Lord. And you got to give me wisdom that from you on what I could do because I want to do the right thing. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to do what would glorify you. I want to honor you in my life. Lord, I need wisdom to be able to do that. Sometimes we also have a problem that, Lord, I, I'm weak. I, I'm tempted to do sin. I'm tempted to do different things. Lord, I need your spiritual strength that I would not fall into temptation. Now, that, the spiritual strength comes from your own personal spiritual life. How much time do you spend just reading the Word of God? Since my eyes were kind of bad, I have been listening to the Word of God. To, on my cell phone and I, I love to listen uh, to, that way I couldn't read so I had to listen to that to learn the scriptures and I've been really enjoyed I've done all the New Testament I've done Proverbs I've done most of the a lot of the Old Testament from Proverbs on and it seems to me by listening to it it seems to me that it's I can, it, I can understand it even better. I don't know why. I read it, and I've read it, and I've read the Bible through many times, but when I listened to it, I could understand and see uh, what was happening in these verses that I have. It's your own spiritual life. <clears throat> God will supply your need, but if you don't have a spiritual foundation, if you don't have the strength, spiritual strength, it's because you never read your Bible, you don't pray, you don't seek the will of God, you're just going through the motions. Don't just go through the motions of being a Christian. Don't be the motions, just come to church and sit down and get up and go home. No, if you don't know what's happening in your life, if you don't understand that there are times that you have to depend solely on the strength of God in your life, then you have no foundation, you can't do it. But you can do it whenever you memorize scripture. Memorize different scriptures like this one. He will supply your need. Spiritually, he will supply your need. He will also supply other needs in your life other than spiritual things. But God will supply every need that you have. And you know, how many people have joy in their Christian life? I'll supply the joy he talks about in John, about having joy of being a child of God. Enjoy being a Christian. I, I enjoy being a child of God. That's why I could say, Lord, it's okay. If you want to take me, it's okay. Go ahead and take me. I've had a great life. You've blessed me. I've been through a lot of things. But Lord, if you want me, okay, take me. I don't know if you've ever been in that position in your life. It's, it's a difficult time in your life if you have those kind of things. But I think that our joy and then our, that the God will supply every need that you have. Wisdom, grace enough to endure whatever is coming in your life. His grace is sufficient in all things in our life. That's, we have to learn to depend on him. Now, if we're carnal Christian, if we're a backslidden Christian, if we're out of the will of God, and if we're fighting God and doing what he wants us to do, no, how are you going to have the joy that you ought to have? You can't. 
That's why there has to be a yieldness of our lives completely to the Lord that he will meet every need that we have. When we're resistant to what God wants us to do, when we are living in sin and knowing we are, then how can we have God lead us? How can we have God bless us? How can we do that? We can't when we're rebellious to what God would have us to do. Be yielded to the Lord. That's where your peace comes from. That's where your joy comes from. And as you do that, you're going to find out that it's a wonderful thing to be a Christian. If you're here today and you are not born again, you have not received Christ as your personal Savior yet, you haven't surrendered to him, then you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't have that experience because the song that we sang, it's the cross that makes the difference. Salvation is in the cross where Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins and shed his blood. And when we come and repent of our sins, ask him to save us, then we now become a child of God. Then we have all the benefits of being a child of God. There's many, many benefits of being a Christian. We're, we don't want to die, but we're, we're, we're not afraid to die. But we have peace that if we do die, we're going to be with the Lord. We have that peace. That's a, that's a great joy because we never know what is going to happen to us. And so uh, he said, I will supply all of your needs. That's a verse that you can claim, God, I need your wisdom. I need your peace. I need your direction. I need your leadership in my life. I need to be able to think of how, what you want me to do in my life. I'm not talking about being in a ministry. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not talking about like that. You can still serve the Lord and not be a preacher. You can serve the Lord by winning people, bringing people, talking to people. You can do that. And so he will supply your need. But you know what? You're going to have to be close to him. You know, when your children have been disobedient and when they uh, have not listened to you and they want something, they want some ice cream, they want a toy. No, no, because you're not obedient. You're not. You, you've, been, you've been bad. No, I, you can't have that. Next time, if you do right, maybe you can have that. Maybe you can have that. Huh? And so you don't bribe your children. You just say yes or no on that. But I'm glad that God can supply every need in the hour that you need. Sickness, trial, cancer, whatever it is, operations. I know from experience God supplied my need. And I, I'm, that's why I'm using that particular verse. Then there's a time in our life in Philippians 4.13, right there, if you've got your Bible open. We know this verse. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I know right after my wife died, uh, I was sitting with the family. And uh, they said, Dad, you're going to have to do things. I said, okay. I can do anything that I need to do. We had to make many decisions and a lot of things like that. I said, I can do anything that I need to do. How can I do that? Because I know that I can do all things. How? Through Christ that will give us strength to be able to do anything and go through anything in our life. Yes, I, I felt very weak. I felt really bad right after the operation. It seems to me like September was a month that I don't remember much about. You know, I didn't know what was expected. I didn't know what I had to do. I didn't know what should be done. And so, you know what? I, I know that I can do anything that comes into my life, whatever that is. Yes, it's, it's disappointment. Yes, we don't understand why some things come into our life. But I know that I'm a child of God, and I know that God can and will give you, me, you strength, me strength, in anything that comes into our life. Whenever we fail in class to do something, we can't graduate on things, you know, okay, 
there's got to be reasons for that. And so whatever it is, and I, I can't go into all the problems that you have, the problems that you have and things that you face, but you just have to remember that I can do all things through Jesus Christ that gives me the strength that I need. That's the benefit of being a child of God. I can do it. I can do it. He can help me to get through it. I don't give up and quit. I don't quit going to church. I don't quit reading my Bible. I don't quit praying. I don't quit all those things. I'm going to keep doing those things even though it's difficult. I feel sad. I feel like I'm defeated as a Christian. I feel those ways. I can, I can still do it. But we have to keep up to become a strong spiritual person. And sometimes we don't think about being a strong Christian person. Weakness. A carnal person that's involved in a lot of sin. And you might be saved, but you're involved in different sins. And you think, well, I don't know. Well, you have to remember that you got to be right with the Lord. Any sin you've committed as a Christian, we don't want to forget 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It doesn't matter what sin you've been guilty of. In your weakness as a Christian, you fall into sin. And God can forgive you of that sin when you repent and forsake it. Just don't say, I'm sorry, and come back next week and say, okay, Lord, I'm sorry again. Okay, Lord, I'm sorry again. No, you're not sorry. If you're really sorry of committing sins, you will not go ahead and do it again and again and again. Repentance means you turn from it. You turn from it and in your life. And that, therefore, you're growing as a Christian. You have to grow as a Christian. It takes time to be spiritual. It takes time to uh, sit down and meditate on scriptures that we need to do it. If you're in, we're in such a hurry, it's hard to separate time that I can read and pray and meditate about my life and about the scriptures and about God's promises that I read one by one in the scriptures. Yes, it takes time, but we're always in a hurry. So we have to remember that I can do all things by God's grace, by God's leadership, by God's power and strength that he can give me to do what I need to do for him. I can do all things from Christ that strengthens me. Nothing that we cannot do. And then there's another verse that means a lot uh, for us uh, that is in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. This verse is a difficult one for us because it, it kind of stops everything. I remember when Bob Hughes, he preached uh, this verse. Let me read it. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is the will of God through Christ here in Christ Jesus concerning you. So God has a plan and the will of him in every one of our lives. Bob Hughes uh, was, preached this verse, and then when he got cancer, he's in the hospital. One of his nurses from his church said, uh, and he said, you have cancer, Bob, pastor. And uh, she said, remember, this is the will of God concerning you. The will of God concerning you. I don't know why I had to have that operation. I joked my doctor. I said, doctor, now that I got my blood, my, all my four vessels, you know, bypass, and no more blockage, I said, I'm good for another 15, 20 years, right? He said, wait, no, no, no. He said, remember, you've been using that heart for 84 years. So it's not like a brand new heart. Uh, and uh, 
you know, I, and I thought, well, I feel good. And so, uh, you know what? We have to say, that is the will of God for me. Why I had that? Why do you have cancer? Why do you have your operations that you do? Why do you have your disappointments in your life? God is trying to maybe uh, teach us to depend on him, depend on his will. I depend on the Lord during those months, so uh, first month or two after the operation. Oh my, I, I really felt bad and I was discouraged. Thank you for all the letters and cards and videos of people, young people, and thank you for that because all that was an encouragement to me. You know, we have to, uh, I thought, man, I'm gonna encourage you to encourage anybody else that is sick, that we have to be an encouragement because it meant a lot to think the cards from RCA and the students there, the things that you sent, the picture book, the whole book uh, that you sent. And I, I appreciate those things because it, you know, I was, I was not, I, I didn't do anything. I didn't have anybody around except, uh, and Eddie, I was in Eddie's house, but I didn't go out and see other people and things. I was always trying to get better. I was trying to get better. But to accept the fact that this is the will of God concerning you. When mom died, uh, I, I had to say, this is the will of God concerning mom. I'm thankful that uh, she didn't end up with uh, you know, Alzheimer and didn't know me and, and didn't have cancer and didn't have all the other things. I'm glad she didn't have that. I had to look at her, her death that, that even though she had the lung problem, uh, but I'm glad she didn't have all the other things that she had, didn't have. So we have to accept those particular things. Why? Some of you lose, has lost your children uh, and you don't know why? I don't know. Why did you have Alfred? Why do you have cancer? Why do you have the things that we have? I don't know. I cannot answer that. But I can say this is the will of God through Christ Jesus concerning you. God is not leaving us alone. He's going to be with us. He's going to help us. He wants us to be strong Christians that whatever comes, we have to do it. You know, I, I was doing my weight lifts in my rehab, you know. I was trying to do these, you know, like the, all these different exercises, you know. I said, I'm trying to be Mr. Atlas, but I didn't make it. Huh? I didn't make it. But you know what? Uh, we are to be spiritually strong. Desire in your life, say, I am not going to be a weak Christian. I'm going to be a strong Christian. What is a strong Christian? A strong Christian is, I claim the promises of God. I claim what the verse says. That's my verse. It's first for every one of us. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. My Lord will supply all my needs through Christ Jesus. You know, I'll trust him to guide my steps every day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know that we cannot boast of tomorrow because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Many times people are so disappointed in life. Why? Because things didn't go the way they wanted it to go. And they feel so disappointed about many things. I always feel like when I'm praying about something and I'm gonna, I think I got the answer and something happens, I don't get to do it. Okay, I feel like God closed the door. Let God open doors for your life. Let God close doors for your life. We don't give up and quit. Say, oh, okay, God doesn't care. God still cares about us because he's molding us and making us into the kind of Christian that he wants us to be. He's got people that we can witness to. He's got people we can talk to. There's many things that God will do in our life if we will just open up our eyes and look and say, okay, Lord, I can do that. I'll do that. Thank you for doing that. Giving me the opportunity to be a witness or whatever it is in our life. But we have to say, God, I'm going to do your will and you're going to give you strength and you keep going on. Sometimes people think that anything bad happens to them, they got to quit. They got to quit serving the Lord. They get mad at God. Never get mad at God. Never get angry at the Lord. Always know that this is the will of God 
for you. This is the will of God for you. And that way, we can always say, okay, Lord, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to honor you. I want you to think about these five verses. I want you to claim <coughs> these promises. They're yours for any time in your life, whether you fail in class, whether you don't get the job, you get fired, or whatever, something happens. It is, it's okay because God will have another thing for you to do. He'll have another opportunity for you to do what you didn't get to do as you first thought about it. And so some of you are not saved. Some of you don't know Christ as Savior. Then you cannot claim these promises because these are for the children of God. And God wants you to be his child. He wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants to save you from all your sins. He wants to do that. But you're going to have to acknowledge and let Christ come into your heart, come into your life, and then you can claim all these promises for your future. If you don't, then you, don't, you can't claim Christ. You know, it's sad when you hear about people dying and you know that they're not a child of God. They're going out. They're going to be in hell. You don't want to be that way. You want to be in heaven with the Lord. So today, you need to make a choice. Would you make a choice to say, I want to receive Christ. I want Christ in my heart. I want Christ in my life. I want him to direct my life. I want him to help me in my life. He will. And if you're a Christian and you're backslidden, you're not trying to do God's will, you're not honoring Christ in your life the way you ought to, then you need to say, I'm going to do that from now on. I want to have a peaceful life. I want to have a joyful life. I want to have the Lord's direction. I want to have the strength of the Lord in my life. I want those things. But you can have them. But you're going to have to say, I'm going to be strong in Christ. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to be happy. When things are wrong, I'm still going to be happy. What about you? If you're not saved, today I want you to be saved. We're going to give an invitation in a minute. And uh, this will give you the opportunity to be saved. This will get the invitation for you to. If you're saved, you need to be baptized. Maybe you need to join the church. I don't know what you need to do. I don't know what God is doing in your life. But he wants to mold you to be Christ-like. Like Christ. And by that, your attitude, your, what you do for him, that's what he wants us to do. Let's bow our heads. Father, as we give this invitation, you know the needs of people. And Lord, I just ask that the Holy Spirit of God will meet those needs of people being saved, people being baptized, people joining the church, people getting closer to you and honoring you in your life. Lord, help us as we give this invitation, for we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand. We'll sing an invitation song. If you need to make a decision today, don't be ashamed. We're here to help you. You, you need to come, all right? We're going to sing 401 in our songbooks. Let's sing together. If you need to come, slip out of your seat. Make your way down the aisle. Men are here to help you. We'll guide you and help you spiritually. Any question you might have. Come on, while we sing. I said, oppress, there's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Only trust him, only trust
trust Him, only trust Him.